Well, a very good evening to each and every one of you joining me, Ms. Belinda Scandal, for this week's Showbiz Scandal here for Canal Street Online. Today we're looking at the Mikado, Gilbert and Sullivan. Now, I knew very little about Gilbert and Sullivan, but they said it was an all-male version, so I'm guessing there's going to be lots of campery involved within this show. But instead of talking about it, let's go and find out what it's all about. Stick around. Shabba! <laughs> So, wonderful, wonderful show. A, a nightmare of a show, I should imagine, for you, though. Because well, you don't stop. No, it's quite... For me, vocally, it's really tough. Um, for me, sort of singing-wise, it's sort of the, um, the, most, sort of the top of my range and the bottom. And, um, yeah, we're all kind of on and off quite a lot, aren't we? Sort yeah. of up and down. Um, but uh, it's fun, though. It's good fun. I'm with a good audience tonight as well. So oh, you get a lot back from the audience, and it just kind of gives you another energy. So it's great. It's a great twist right at the very beginning, where you think, you wonder, because you've heard it's going to be all male, and you wonder what's going to happen and what's going to be. And then all of a sudden, you've all started doing your, um, your nice high bits. Yes, we do. Yeah. And I think people go, pardon? Who is it? <laughs> um, and I do, I, I do remember doing another one of the shows years and years ago, uh, Pirates of Penzance, mm -hmm. and um, going out to the shop after the half hour call and walking past two little old ladies flipping through the programme going, Mabel's Alan Richards, oh, must be a typo. And I was like, surprise! And so some people don't have a clue, they don't get, they don't know what they're coming to and they're surprised. Has the score been altered much to make use of the um, male voice for Sopranoish? Um, it's not been, in terms of like key changes, it's not been altered at all, no. We, really? we uh, yeah, we, we, we tried it. Um, for, I think the only number we tried it for was um, was one of the uh, it's, it's one it was one of the chorus girls numbers yeah uh, comes a train of the first the first uh, girls entry but it was too low for the for the altos mm -hmm. if we lowered it they were in their boots anyway uh -huh. but the sopranos were hitting top G's mostly comfortably at first <laughs> yeah. and then progressively as we do it so yeah no we haven't altered a thing in terms of the key it's all a key and what happens if anything goes wrong while you're out there singing or you forget your lines. Um, what do we do? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you just, yeah, just bust on through and hope people don't notice. Mm -hmm. uh, I, Has it happened? I, well, I stumbled over some lines tonight. Uh, yeah, my, just my teeth fell out. Um, but, um, yeah, we do, yeah, we've had a couple of people that do just go a bit, and then you just, you just kind of have to just pick yourself up and carry on. Because there's loads of words. It's like, some of them are really fast. Yeah, and I'm all right, I'm lucky, um, but some of the, some of the boys do have... A lot and big chunks, mm -hmm. and and it's all and it's all 120 years old. Yeah, something like 80, that. 1885. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. it's like, it's 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 almost Shakespeare. It's not almost Shakespearean, obviously, but it's they're really big and they're really wordy. Mm -hmm. And half the battle is trying to lay it out so that it makes sense. Yeah. Um, because it can just get rattled off, and then everyone's like. I struggled with it. From I, I kind of joked when we opened. I said I'll be fine by Manchester, and I think now I finally have got it. Touch wood without making any mistakes, because there's so much to say, and I've got a lot of plot stuff too. So I've got a quite important stuff. So, oh, just my head, just constantly thinking. I, I can't relax at all. It's just. On the edge of it, I was getting it wrong. And as if the words aren't enough, you then layer it up with some what look like very intricate dance moves. Yeah, I'm lucky I don't have to do any of them. No, not me, I don't know. <laughs> no, but they are. The boys, they do have to do a heck of a lot. Mm -hmm. um, it's very physical for them, uh, particularly the first like 20, 25 minutes. They don't really stop. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I get to go off and sit down, and then they come, will come off stage sweating. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh, isn't it hot? <laughs> um, but no, it's, yeah, it's really, it's, it's a full on almost, it is a musical really. I know it's an operetta originally, but it is almost now a bit of a musical, full on dances. And how has it developed since rehearsal then? Has it developed a lot? Has it changed a lot? Um, it changed drastically from the last day of rehearsals to when we opened then in Bath. The three or four days we had when we were doing the technical rehearsals, mm -hmm. it changed. It <laughs> changed almost. Yeah. The whole thing almost changed. It was. Um, it's just trying to work out where it was going. Um, Sasha, the director, and I think when she saw it actually on the stage with the with the lights, the costume. Cause we didn't see our costumes until a couple of days before we left rehearsals right. and then it was just literally every time we had an, another tech session we did a scene it would change I'd go off stage write it on my, phone, on my iPhone to work out what you know, to remember what was going to go on um, so yeah but then since then it's kind of just yeah. it hasn't hasn't changed since we've opened actually it's kind of stayed the same isn't it no, it's, so well yeah it's sort of moments have developed people have yeah. added, added and found little moments within things if they did one thing on one night they've got to laugh one way then they'll they might keep that but yeah things like that develop and change yes. yeah. yeah and how is it for you up there on your own 
Yeah, well, I mean, it's, it's certainly it's it's an experience to do it on my own mm-hmm. rather than being surrounded by a band. Yeah. It is it is. I mean, it offers sort of more communication. It's something that I I don't often if I'm if I'm waving a stick or I'm or I'm leading a band or whatever. Then it's 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 less personal for me. It's less mm-hmm. less like a give and take with particularly with with these guys with with sort of the solo numbers and these sort of things. I can really respond to to the moments, the little pauses and nuances that they put into that. And it works in a smaller theatre as well, doesn't it? Yeah. Because of the solo piano. Yes. Yeah. yeah. It was, it's, and we've, I mean, it, it's, it takes a, a while for us in the first venue, first night of every venue to go, all oh, right, okay, you get used to the sound, you get used yeah. to the distance. For, but it's my first time here and it, it's a stunning auditorium, but I didn't realise quite how close the yeah, front row was the and they are right there yeah. um, and it's but it was awesome like you suddenly everything goes right back to being really cinematographic that's, mm-hmm. that's not a word um, <laughs> it's still oh, yeah, I made it up and um, because yeah because you get used to playing the bigger spaces and having to just amp it up by 10% but mm-hmm. here even at, even at the back you know that they can see just a tiny little flicker in your eyeball and they laugh and it's it suddenly makes the whole show something in, incredibly different and it was really exciting tonight it was brilliant it felt like a first night tonight didn't yeah. it it really it was did it was a perfect size space I think because the yeah. smallest we've gone was probably I think in Beverly where we had about 160 I think as the capacity there yeah. but then in contrast with Bath a place like Bath, which yeah. is like 15, 1600, and they're quite expansive, and you really got to play out. And, the, and you're, it's not that you lose the subtle bit, T, but you've just got to do things in a slightly bigger way. But yeah. this yeah. is, yeah, like you say, just right there, they're close knits. Yeah. And do each of you have a favourite moment in the show that you do or that somebody else does? I quite enjoy the tea and biscuit scene with uh, Lucy the waitress coming on. Uh-huh. I do enjoy that. Well, did you have a favourite bit? Um, yeah, I, I, I quite like um, the the moments usually in, in Tit Willow right near the end with mm-hmm. with with because uh, uh, David playing Coco has a tendency to, to, to pause in a different moment every night, right. but not in an annoying way. I yeah, should yeah. say <laughs> it's it's in a, it's in a way that you sort of go, oh okay, he's found it there. But again, because we're usually so close, well, I'm in a box for this venue. How much are you actually watching then? Because obviously you're having to do the actual playing. Are you watching what's going on to? Conduct almost. Um, yeah, I mean, there's moments I can I have sort of have to conduct uh-huh. in terms of just for my own peace of mind and just in case they're watching me. Yeah. And um, <laughs> <laughs> um, and, uh, and and yeah, there's certainly there's other moments where I'm I'm now lucky enough that I think I've got most of the score in my head, so I don't have to look at that. Right. And my fingers know where they are, so I don't have to look at those. Yeah. So I'm usually just staring them in the eyes, which is. So if it's gone wrong for them, has it gone wrong for you yet? Um, it's certainly been. I've had a couple of moments. Yeah. Uh-huh. There's. Um, I think. I think usually the worst moment for me, weirdly, is right at the end of the bowels. Normally, there's a moment right at the end of the bowels where, because every venue is different uh-huh. and because the curtains come in at different speeds, I'll be playing it and think, <laughs> oh, I could just. I could just cut because I'm sort of doing a vamp. I'm sort of going round and round. But then I might go, oh, the curtains have shut. Oh, I could just finish here. Oh no! And then I look back at the score and I'm in a different place in my head than I am actually on the page. And I end up just playing like, knees up, mother brown till the end. <laughs> I'm going plonk, 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 end. Um, that works. Yeah, I mean, yeah, button, end, it finishes, yeah. Well, I feel educated, very educated. Um, a wonderful Gilbert and Sullivan production, and one that you've probably not seen before. And as much as it's all men and you expect, oh, it'd be a bit camp, it's actually got a lot of pathos and a lot of character about it. There is a single weak member in the cast, which is unusual, because normally there's one that you pick up and you're, oh, but it's absolutely amazing. I encourage anybody to get a ticket and come and watch this version of the Mikado. It's sensational. Again, a show where not one of them seems to take a breath or have a moment of not doing much. They're all absolutely sensational. So for that reason, and that reason only, I'm marking this my first for Canal Street Online Gilbert and Sullivan production. I'm marking it a 5 out of 5 scandal stars. I'll see you all this time next week. Till then, take care. Ta-ra, bye-bye.